Okay, ready, go. Ready, go. So let's take a look at uh, what you're currently doing. In the backswing, it's really slow. Your, your backswing is really small. You're only stopping about here. So then uh, you have to go from here to the impact. So you have really a short runway. So when the plane lifts off on a really short runway, then the, the plane should have a good engine, right? Accelerate quickly. But if the engine power is not enough, then you have slow. And also, because the backswing is not large, your body is not ready. And then you tend to use your arms because your body is not ready. So you're not creating this, uh, the condition where you can actually use your body because the backswing is too small. Uh, on the way, it's, it's not as the one motion here, you're hesitating here. And then from here, try to swing hard. So what we need to do is, uh, we need to increase the speed of the backswing more than anything. Uh, in doing this, you have to let the club head go all the way. Okay. There's no positive uh, aspect of uh, having really small backswing, particularly when it's really slow. You have to increase the backswing speed and also increase the size of the backswing. Okay. So let's try something new today. Um, I will use a, a toy that I got recently. This is called, uh, uh, this is uh, from uh, Steven Erickson, uh, and, and he wanted to call this uh, a bit plane motion trainer. So hold the, this, uh, this thing uh, here, and then try to swing just back and forth, and then try to uh, move this along uh, the swing plane here, or keep it uh, on, on a plane. Uh, stand, stand on the mat, yeah, swing back and forth. And instead of using your, your arm muscles, you have to use the body. Wait, 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 wait. So in the back swing, you just did this. Right. It's way away from the plane. You have to go this way. Okay. So keep it on, on a plane. Mm, on, this, on this side, you tend to uh, flatten this, but maintain that plane and also let it go that way as well. And instead of, instead of using your arm muscles here, use the motion. So if you use the speed of the device, let it go and then let, let it oscillate here like this. Instead of trying to lift it up with your muscles, use the speed of the device. When, it's, when it moves faster here, then it will automatically go up to a certain height, right? Use the speed, use the speed. No, 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 no. <laughs> Watch the motion of this device. The reason why this has this flat surface is to show you the motion plane. You have to move this here. You have to move this along this way. It, it, here's the swing plane. Then it has to stay on the swing plane here instead of going like this. Yeah, you don't fight, don't fight. Just, just to use the speed, and then have this, uh, you know, the pendulum motion. You don't have to lift it up. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. You need to change the way you uh, approach to this. You are not lifting this up here. You are using the speed here, to create this motion, and then let it go, all the way up here. Okay, this is what you need. Instead of try to lift it up with your arms. Use the motion here. Develop enough speed so that it let it go. Uh, 
Oh, 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 you're going too, too far out. No need to go that high. Okay. So just uh, to the level, you can continue this pendulum motion here. No need to go all the way here. Okay. Just to create the pendulum motion. Easy pendulum motion using the speed. Okay, it's better now. But still, you're <laughs> flexing the arm here. You try to lift here. Let it go all the way. Keep it straight as much as possible. So you have to turn the shoulders good instead of lifting the, the hands. Turn the shoulders and then create this good planar motion. Swing, swing. Swing, that's better, that's better. So now you, are, you started working with the device. So always when you use a, something like this, or the kettlebell, or a rope, or the club, or whatever that is, don't try to uh, dominate it using your muscles. You have to really work with it, okay? Because every object has the different uh, uh, moment of inertia. It's, it's called the, the angular inertia, but uh, so in order to organize your motion, you have to work with the device and then control the moment of inertia well so that you feel most comfortable as you repeat the motion. So work with the device again. So let it, uh, let it have a pendulum motion by using the speed at the bottom. Throw, 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 throw. Throw, throw. Yes, that's the idea. That's the idea. So let me recall this. Okay. So swing back and forth. Ready, go. Swing, swing. Throw, 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 throw. Okay. Now, so watch how you're moving now. Swing, swing, throw, 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 okay. And who is Steven Erickson? Yeah. Who is he? Uh, he's uh, just the, the YouTube viewer, but uh, he came up with this idea and sent me uh, this. I got this uh, about two or three days ago, so this is brand new. And he went through multiple versions and finally came up with the handles like this. Okay. It is actually quite natural. So, um, and more than anything, you have to feel the motion of the plane trainer, plane motion train, and then let it go instead of uh, lifting it up. Okay? Now, in, in using this, there's a, actually an easier way to uh, do this. Currently, you're pretty much using your arms but you actually have to use a low body. And when you move things around, when you have to turn, turn here, give enough shift to the right side, left side, right side, left side. See how far you can go. Now, just with the arms, arms down, swing the arms back and forth. Again, no flexion here, no lifting. Just let it go all the way out, all the way out. With that, shift as much as possible. No, 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 you're not shifting at all. You're just a turning. Uh, you want me to sway? No, that term is really misleading. So there are diff three different ways of moving. Okay. Sway means the, the top is moving. Okay. okay, this motion here, this is sway. And then slide, when the pelvis goes like this, is pelvis, uh, slide, shift means a more active, intended motion, lateral motion. Using the legs, you are moving the body left to the right. This is called the shift. Let's use the term shift instead of sway. Sway always has a negative meaning. In postural control, when you try to stand still, but you, your top actually moves, it's called a sway. For some reason, this term is used in uh, golf for the lateral motion which has very negative meaning. But you can have active shift motion, left to right. Intended 
the lateral motion. This is called shift. We need to create shift. Okay? So try to move the upper body laterally as much as possible as you shift and then throw the arms, shift and throw the arms. Ooh, 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 ooh. So relax your arms, relax your arms. Uh, uh, lean forward, relax your arms. Just to go as much here. And then throw, shift here and then throw, shift here and throw, shift here and throw. I feel a lot of, um, I sense a lot of resistance here. You have to give a good shift motion, literally, okay? before you turn. So let's, uh, let's dance with me. In the swing, right? <laughs> you you can, you should, you should introduce the shift motion in your swing. Huh. The reason why you are always turning around and using relying on your arms is because you are not activating your lower body. Here we have a big muscles here, so the big job should be done by the big muscles. It's like a fighting a war with the rifles only, even though you have uh, missiles and uh, heavy uh, artillery. So introduce this shift motion. Make the motion as natural as possible here. So put the arms down here. Uh, uh, you know, when you work with me uh, today, just uh, forget, forget about uh, your, uh, you know, the, the ideas you have about golf swing, okay? Just let's start from uh, scratch, let's say, okay? So that uh, you can really accept um, some new movements. If you always try to filter the information using the, the, your, your swing thoughts, then it's impossible to uh, change a lot of things. So here, put the arms down here. Arms relaxed here, so you can swing it easily here. And then shift to the left and then throw, right and throw, left and throw, right and throw, left and throw. Better. Now, we need to work on the timing here. So shift always first, and then arm throw. So here, when the arm is here, you shift, and then throw, and then shift here and throw, shift here and throw, shift here and throw. So shift is always, in a given direction, shift is always the first one, and then you throw the arms. Throw, shift the first and then throw, shift the first and throw, shift then throw, 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 throw. And also in doing this, you show the tendency of uh, weaving motion like this. Instead, just let it go out and then let it go out. So try to really throw. When you try to pull it down, then your body naturally moves like this. Instead, just throw out and reach, reach out here, throw and reach out. The key is the throwing motion, both ways, outward, not bring this in, okay? Mm, the timing is not right. Uh, your lower body motion, upper body motion, they're not really helping each other. So you have to feel that your lower body is really supporting your upper body turn or throw motion. Use the lower body, shift, and then throw, shift and throw, instead of these moving on their own thoughts. So the key is a throwing motion here, because the upper body has to turn and generate enough speed, right? That your lower body has to support that. So your lower body is helping the upper body to turn and then create the speed. So it should be timed really well. So shift and throw, shift and throw, shift and throw, shift and throw. So emphasize the throwing motion. Uh, on the way down, on the way down you have a pelvis slide. So what, what happens is you go here, pelvis slide and then try to do this. Instead, just a shift here, just to throw here. Instead of doing this. By sliding the pelvis, you already, already lose the timing. Uh, 
and then what, it, what, what will help in that process have a little bit of uh, up and down motion, the feel of up and down motion. Throw, 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 then throw. So when you throw, either, either direction, when you throw, you have to use that side leg to push the ground. And with that, you are throwing. You have to use the leg action. So let's, let's dance with me. So keep the arms here. So let's uh, go step by step here. So from here, shift to the right only, just the shift. Shift to the right. Bring your hip over the right, right foot. Enough. Uh, no, do not go down. Instead of going down here, just to try to shift laterally. This is good amount of shift, right? And then push the ground by extending the knee. Push the ground. By, and instead of just uh, going back this way, yeah, by pushing, oh, easy, easy, easy. By pushing the ground with the leg, you can create this turn here. But stay, on, stay over the right side. Do not go back to the middle here. So again, shift here, turn, and stand on the right side. Can you feel the tension in the hip? So this is what you need to go. And then shift to left, do the same thing, push the ground in the turn here. Shift to the right. Oh, don't turn this. To, to shift to the right, and then by pushing the ground and turn. Shift the left by pushing the ground and the turn here. So this is what you need to uh, feel. Shift the first and then turn. When you shift, when you shift, no sliding like this. Use the whole upper body. Shift here, and by pushing, turn. Shift the whole upper body and the turn. Still, still you, are you are turning intentionally the upper body. You have to use the leg to turn. So uh, when the knee is extended, when the knee is extended, then you'll be able to push the ground, right? In order to push the ground, you have to extend the knee. With this extension of the knee, you're bringing the hip up and slightly backward. With this, create this turn motion here. And remember the, what you did with the plane trainer. You're going this way here instead of going this way. So shift it to the right. And as you push and then create the turn and then create this shoulder turn like this on this plane here, okay? instead of going this way. So here, shift the left, and then push to the ground with the left leg and the turn here. Shift the right. And the turn by pushing the left. Mm -hmm. So keep, keep moving both ways continuously. Yes, now it's, uh, the motion is a lot better. You start using the lower body. But uh, keep the gaze relatively uh, fixed here so that uh, you don't lose the balance. Uh, still, you, you have tendency of uh, pelvis slide here. So move the whole, whole upper body together, together here, and then turn. Whole upper body together, and then turn. Whole body together, and turn, 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 turn. Use the legs, use the legs. Oh, I feel, I feel a lot of resistance here. You're not turning your body at all. When you push the ground, the body turns, then when I introduce the motion, there shouldn't be any resistance. But when I, I try to turn your body, I feel a lot of resistance. That means you're not really turning the body. So the legs drive the pelvis motion and also the, the upper body turn. And here, so I will put this under your left foot here, okay? And then hold this with using your right hand. Now, during the backswing, try to pull the red one this way during the backswing. Uh, do, not use, do not flex your elbow. Do not use the arm. 
And then with this, the best way to pull this is give enough shift and then turn here. Uh, you can hold the hold here, down here. So develop more tension. Yeah. Doing the backswing, try to shift the body as much as possible, and then turn and bring the shoulder up. That way, without using the arms, you'll be able to pull it, right? Then the opposite. Mm -hmm. And then backswing. Then downswing. Make it continuous. Make it continuous. So you can introduce a lot of uh, lateral motion there. But still, instead of uh, weaving like this, just like, pull it, pull it as if you are starting a mower. Just to try to pay attention to pull, and then pull this side, and then pull this side. Okay. And then in doing that, use your legs, use your legs. The most of the effort should come from the leg actions. That's how you awaken your legs. So currently in your swing, okay, so that's good. Currently in your swing, you are not using your legs at all. So come up here, about here, and then try to hit the ball with the arms. So that's why. Uh... So again, using that feel, again, let's just swing the arms laterally. Again, what you need to feel is uh, bring this, this uh, shoulder high up here. Yeah, that's good, that's, that's good. The same thing to this side, bring this left shoulder high up, yeah? Mm -hmm. So this is the key here. When you, when you try to move the shoulder high up, you have to use the leg to push. So your leg will support your upper body. Yeah, bring the shoulder up, up, the hip up, hip up. So now put the arms down. So dance with me. And then try to have good rhythmic motion. Uh, are you a good dancer? No. <laughs> so we need to uh, use a rhythmic motion. So you have to use the body rhythmically. That means uh, you are taking turns and then use the right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg. Okay. So. We'll start from this side, throw the arms here, throw up, up, up. So when you throw, it's not just the turning, but have the feel of moving the shoulder high up. This motion here, okay? So let's go with me. So match to my tempo. Along the way, I will increase the tempo that you have to follow. Okay, so let's go left, right, make a bigger motion, throw the arms all the way, left, right, Shift left, shift right, shift left, shift right, shift left, shift right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Mm. You can you can move the arms a bit higher. Okay, you can move the, the arms a bit higher. So instead of just the, just the coming about here, try to go up, reach out, reach out. So again. Left, right, reach out, reach out, touch, reach out, touch, reach out, touch, right, left, right, left, right, swing, 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 fast, left, right, left, right, use the legs to control this tempo, left, right, left. Now you're using your body a lot better, <laughs> more rhythmically. So you can do it. Actually, you're a good dancer. Judging from, <laughs> so when you awaken your, your legs, then suddenly the body rhythm changes. It becomes a lot more e uh, easier and natural because, again, the big job is done by the big muscles. And also it will, it will control the tempo because the leg actions are basically controlling the, the tempo here. So you cannot rush, the upper body cannot rush. After this push is done, then you can do this, right? As you are pushing, you can do this. So the leg action is really important. 
So again, again, I try to feel the rhythm, or almost like a polistic motion here. So throw the hands high up, high up, high up, reach out, reach out, throw the hands, throw the hands, throw the hands using the low body, throw, 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 throw faster, left, right, left, right, use a, a bit bouncing action, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Yes, yes, yes. Good. So now, your upper body and lower body are moving uh, more harmoniously now. So the timings are a lot better. Earlier, they were all moving on their own thoughts. But now it's, a, it's better orchestrated. So these motions, without the club, sometimes you can use the plane trainer, use the, the spare hands, and so on. You can develop the rhythm. Now let's go back to the plane trainer again. So whether that will change anything. Again, as you swing this back and forth, you don't have to go too far. You have good pendulum motion, but use the lower body action and try to develop rhythm. So go ahead, swing left and right. Mm -hmm. Slight up and down motion, throw, 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 yes, throw. All right, the timing is a lot better now. Okay, keep going. Swing, 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 swing. Throw left, right, left, right, left, right. Okay. Still, this is the previous one. Still looks like you are using your arms a lot. It's the flex here, in the, using the arms a lot. Now, this one. Swing, throw left, right, left, right, left, right, okay. The lower body is engaged more. Can you see the difference? Again, everything is turning together. You're using the arms to lift it up. Now here, yeah. Actually, the motion is a bit bigger, but uh, now the lower body is engaged more. So the overall flow is a lot better. So this is the idea. Okay. And then now, let's use the kettlebell here. In your case, you have to use uh, these devices and then develop good rhythm before you use the club. Uh, let's, use, let's use this time uh, this group here, as if you're holding a club. And then swing the kettlebell back and forth, but try to keep the kettlebell motion more laterally instead of bringing it in. Remember, with the plane trainer, you try to bring the shoulders high here and then move the, uh, the trainer along the plane. The same thing. So let's keep the, the kettlebell motion more laterally instead of going inward. And then use the lower body. They have rhythmic, rhythmic, ballistic motion, and then throw, throw, throw. Engage, engage your lower body more. Push left side, push right side, left, right. Remember that uh, more uh, starting uh, motion. Bring the shoulders high up, the hips high up, instead of going backward. Yeah, that motion is. Uh, better. So you are now getting into uh, this new rhythm, engaging the lower body more. So this is also a good tool that you can use at home. So the bottom line is if you give enough speed here, using the speed you can let the kettlebell go. Throw, 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 by using the leg action. I actually put minimum effort with my arms and the upper body. This is pretty much coming from the yeah. So always using the speed here, let it go, instead of lifting things up. Right? Uh, this will be the ultimate test, whether you can really work with uh, you know, this device really well or not. <laughs> because the rope is uh, quite flexible here. 
<laughs> you cannot manipulate it with this. You cannot manipulate it with the arms. So you have to let it go by using the speed. Throw, throw around your body, throw around your body, throw around your body. So the easiest way to do this is give enough speed to the rope. Pay attention to the motion of the end of the rope. It has to go around your body fast enough. Okay? So swing back and forth. No need to use a lot of uh, upper body effort. It's just, uh, again, rhythmic motion coming from the lower body. Give one good stroke and then start. It's just one, one big stroke. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's better. As you uh, repeat this, your motion is getting better. Now, one thing we need to change is on the way down, what you do is you're turning and then pushing like this. Turning like this. Instead, just to try to throw the arm and rope. Instead of turning here, turning and try to push. So keep more speed. So imagine that you have a sticker at the end of the rope and you want to shake it off by rapidly swinging the rope. Okay, if you, your body moves a lot and the rope doesn't move that fast, then you cannot shake it off. So give a good motion to the rope. Throw it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Use a rhythmic body motion. Throw. Very good. Now, overall, let's keep the motion plane of the rope a bit flatter. Okay? So this is not the actual club with this, this length, but imagine that your club is actually longer than this. Then you have to swing probably along this plane instead of this, right? So keep it a bit flatter. Use the, use the lower body. Uh, you need to shift, you need to shift good, shift. Shift it this way, and then shift it this way, and then shift it this way. Keep good shift until you're doing this. Shift here, and then shift here. No, oh, no, no, no. If during the back swing, you feel your left leg is in this position, that means you're not shifting enough. When you give enough shift, then this will be straightened in the front of you here. Okay? But what you do is this here. It's a flex this way. Instead, give enough shift so that you feel that the left leg is fairly straight. So both ways, you have to give a good shift. Don't worry about the shift. The fact that you can continue this motion means you have full control of the shift motion. That's why uh, shifting a lot is not a problem because you have a control over it, okay? So this may be the, probably the, the most foreign concept here, but um, for you, give enough shift here, and then enough shift, enough shift, enough shift. So when you turn this way, try to turn around the right hip because the right leg is supporting your body and you can turn the body around the right hip. On the right side and then turn around the right hip when you go left here, the, the left leg is supporting your body and turn around the left hip here. So give enough shift. If you can give enough shift, then your swing changes completely. Mm -mm. The focus is the, the rope motion, not your body motion. So what happens is uh, you're, you're doing this motion here, and then the rope motion is all just coming from the arms here. Throwing the rope is the key here. So go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Your body will promote this good the rope motion. So the key is the rope motion, not 
what you do with your body. No, 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 it's not from your arms. You have, it has to come from your whole body. Turn, turn here. Not from your arms. It's not snappy motion from your arms, but rather you have to use the whole body. Again, it's not this motion using the arms here. Turn the body, turn the body, turn, turn, turn. So use the legs as much as possible. And the turn the body. And the, it's because first your gaze is moving and also it's the upper body turn, that's why. When the upper body is a, producing this turn motion, if the turn, the lower body follows, that's why you lose the balance. But if you move the lower body first and then throw the upper body, you have a less stable, more stable uh, finished position. And also when the rope, well, you have a big uh, chest here, but when the rope hits your back here, that means you don't have enough shoulder turn. So try to keep enough shoulder turn. When you don't turn your shoulder enough, then you have to use your arms. That's why you, 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 you are getting this uh, arm-driven swing. Okay, try to, try to uh, use the legs so that you turn the pelvis a bit more because you have a bulky uh, you know, trunk, a lot of wisdom here. So if you keep this here and then just to try to turn shoulder, it doesn't work. You have to turn the pelvis more. So the legs should allow the pelvis to turn more. With that, shoulder will naturally turn more. Use a uh, bouncing motion, rhythmic motion, to feel the motion of the rope around your body. Throw, throw, throw. Shift more, shift, 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 shift. Shift and turn enough, shift and turn enough. So again, so you have uh, two, two things to do. One, you have to move the rope fast enough, but at the same time, you have to maintain good balance or body control. So currently, if the upper body is turning like this, lower body assumes a passive role, then you lose the balance. The lower body has to drive everything so that everything is under control here. Again, keep, keep good uh, lateral shift. Now, on the way down, on the way down, you go up here, and then all you do is just the turn here. You have to introduce the shift motion before you turn. So go up here, and then shift, and then turn. You have to have this shift turn, a shun, shun rhythm, both ways. Okay? So particularly in the downswing, you go up here, and just the turn. That's why the right side is closing in too quickly. So go up here, and then shift the left, Give a good shift motion and then turn. Okay? So as if you have a wall here. There's a wall, imagine a wall here. You're bumping into the wall with the, the shoulders here. Mm, turn and then push the wall with the shoulders, not the, the butt, okay? with the shoulders. Top part of push and then turn. So delay opening of the chest on the way down. Move the, move the rope more away from your body. Keep it flatter. Keep it flatter. So right, right there, your target point is this one here. Try to bring the club along this line. Here. Throw out. Ooh, it's not coming from your arm motion like this, but rather the body turn and throw, body turn and throw, instead of doing this. 
Yeah, I understand it intellectually. I just I don't know what it feels like. So you have to make the difference. Okay, you are always using the arms a lot, but you have to get away from that. And so more than anything, you have to organize, uh, integrate all the sensory inputs from your body, and then you have to you have to feel what you are doing. You have to know what your body is doing. Yeah. Uh, instead of this motion here, using the arms, turn the body and throw, turn the body and throw, is a throwing motion instead of snappy arm motion. So image that. And to make it flatter. The, the hands are reaching out too much. So when I say you make the flatter, guide the rope along a flatter plane, but that doesn't mean to do this. Still, the hands should stay reasonably close to your body, but instead of going down like this, like this, so let it go slightly more uh, flatter along the flatter plane here, but your hands should stay reasonably close to your body so, so that it, you can have a comfortable uh, body posture. It's a still, it's arm motion, it's a quite a snappy. So that it hits your back. Instead, by adding motion here, it has, it has to wrap around your body. Okay? Instead of, if you just uh, stop here, hit, hit, hit. This is what you do because you're using the arms. But at the end, if you introduce the shoulder turn more by turning the pelvis, then it will nicely settle here instead of. So you have to have good slow down toward the end of the turn, okay? Instead of using the arms and then hit your body. Mm. So here. Still, you are trying to move everything with your hand motion. Yeah, 46 years of that. So. Yes. So your focus is your hand motion, but your focus should be the motion of the end of the rope. Now, the rope is part of your body. Okay? Part of your body. When you swing this, instead of focusing on the arm motion, the hand motion here, you have to feel the motion of the end of the rope. As if you have one more arm here, connected here. So pay attention to this motion. This should nicely go around your body instead of using the hands. So again, feel the motion of the end of the rope. So you have to adjust your hand motion and bring it nicely here. Instead of, okay? so pay attention to the motion of the end of the rope. It's a matter of your intention and focus. Yes, yeah, better, it's better, yeah. Feel the motion of the end of the rope, throw, Throw, yes, yes. Reach out a bit more, slightly more, so make it make the rope plain, yeah, flatter. Throw, throw, feel the motion of the end of the rope, yes, it's a lot better now. Throw, 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 turn the body enough, turn the body first and then throw the arms, turn the body and throw, I'll record this, keep, keep swinging, swing, feel the motion of the end of the rope, swing. Okay. Uh, so I, I only got the last two swing here, but. Um, swing, feel the motion of the end of the rope, swing. Now, this motion looks a lot more comfortable. And what happens is um, you are gradually changing your motion pattern. Particularly in this round, you really started paying attention to the end of the rope. So instead of driving the whole thing with the hand motion, you let the end of the rope go. So it can be just the easy motion. You don't have to swing that, uh, you know, that fast. But as, as long as the, the rope moves reasonably fast, 
your body motion doesn't have to be that big. <coughs> you see? Just one arm, still you can maintain the same swing plane. Left arm. Both arms here. The reason why I can maintain the same plane is because I adjust my body motion to, to secure this consistent rope motion. So that's the perspective. Whichever um, device you use, ultimately, what you need to pay attention to is motion of the device. So your body motion should be adjusted to secure continuous, consistent motion. So again, it's a seven, seven feet. That's, a, that's the standard rope I use, but uh, in your case, because you have a bigger body, you can have a bit longer one, so they let the rope go around your body. But, but experiencing the rope motion that goes around your body, that, uh, that makes a big difference. Because uh, when you wait until this happens, you will have enough time in the transition phase. So you, do, you cannot rush. So again, pay attention to the motion of the end of the rope. And particularly in the backswing, try to have a relatively faster rope motion. Yes. Oh, good. Yes. Uh huh. Uh, make it flatter. Make it make it the uh, rope rope plane a bit flatter. Yes. Throw. 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 So make make the backswing a bit faster so that the rope can go all the way around. Yes. Yes. Very good. So with the increased speed in the backswing, what happens is the rope moves faster, so it goes all the way here. <coughs> if it's a slow, then you'll end up somewhere here. But when it's fast enough, then it will go all the way here. So that's the key. So you have to increase the backswing speed, even with the club. When you have faster backswing, it will go enough. Okay, but if you just lift the arm slowly, it stops here. Using the motion, let it go all the way. Again, <coughs> so make the back swing fast. And to make the swing plane, oh, uh, it's too steep. A bit, make, make it a bit flatter. Uh, not that snappy motion. Fast motion doesn't mean snappy motion. You have to use the body. Still pay attention to the rope. The rope motion should be smooth but fast instead of snappy hand motion. Uh, in the back, you're using the hands. It's a snappy. So go here from here, just using the body first and then throw. Use the body and throw, use the body and throw. You have to have shift first and then introduce the turn. But when you start turning from the beginning, okay, shift followed by turn. So you need to, uh, here, if you really pay attention to the motion of the end of the rope, Initially, you can have really smooth motion here, but, but just to give uh, enough speed to the end of the rope so that it can go around your body. From here, you can make more active turn both ways. When you increase the effort, but still it moves along the same plane. So whether you're swinging fast or slow, you have to uh, maintain the same plane, right? That comes from the body motion. So actually, when you have too much arm motion, it, it hurts the, uh, the swing plane. Swing, feel the motion of the end of the rope, throw, throw, throw. Let's use the right arm only, Let's see how it goes. Uh, then at the end of end here, the, the rope falls here. So you still have to give enough speed so that the rope goes here. Uh, 
left arm only. You have to use the body. You have to use the body to guide the rope. Oh, it's going all over because you're using the arms here. Use the body and then just to throw the rope. Your arm is just controlling the direction, okay? But the speed is coming from the body. So with the left arm only here, still the motion is coming from, from the body. Throw, 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 and the left arm is just controlling the direction. It's the same, throw, using the body, throw, throw, throw. So whether you use both arms or one arm, still the swing plane should be consistent. Now let's do this. Starting from both hands, so let me demonstrate this. Starting from both hands, swing, 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 then release the left arm using the right arm only, left arm only, continuously here, and then both arms here. See if you can control the rope motion. Again, it's like a baby. When you have a baby, you cannot <laughs> do whatever you want, but you have to pay attention to the motion of the baby, right? So the rope motion is what you need to uh, secure. Good rope motion. The right arm only. Throw, just a throw with the body motion, throw. And the left arm. Oh, it came in quite inward. Both. Both arms. Yeah, particularly when you use the left arm only, it goes all over. That means that you, you use the right arm dominance. If you uh, shift to the left enough, then left arm will be able to function well. But if you don't shift in just a turn, okay. So now, now this time the goal is swing the rope as fast as possible. But it's not snappy motion, but try to swing the rope both ways quite fast. So feel, particularly feel the motion of the end of the rope as you do. Use the rhythmic body motion, faster both ways. Yeah, still along the way, along the way, I see the swing plane is changing. So that means uh, you're not really paying attention to the rope motion, but still well, it's, it's body motion. It's flat, I'm trying to get it out here. Yeah, yeah, but um, so you need to come up with a consistent swing plane. One, one important uh, goal of uh, this rope swing is develop consistent motion back and forward. And when you introduce a, you know, unnecessary movement, then the swing becomes more complex and then the rope starts moving all over. So you have to simplify the motion. So mainly it's a motion along the swing plane here. Keep enough speed to the rope. The whole thing is promote good rope motion here. And then you are adjusting the body motion to secure it there, right? So this is a, <laughs> the rope is a, it's a good tool, but sometimes if your body motion is not uh, there, it's hard to promote the good rope motion. Again, try to work with the rope. Shift, 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 shift. Use the legs to promote a good upper body turn. When you start introducing the shift, then they were moving separately. So this motion, shift and then throw, shift and throw, shift and throw. So the shift and the putting more weight on the 
the side you are ro rotating to, that shift actually has to promote a good turn here. But so wait until the shift is done and then throw, shift and throw, shift and throw, instead of sliding the pelvis like this. Yeah, it's very weird for me to see the area down here moving in my vision. So in order to, here's the, the, the thing. Um, you know, to actually uh, move the body well, then you have to use the ground really well. Right. In order to use the ground well, your body has to move both vertically and laterally. The forward backward motion is, you know, the least important one, but uh, at least you have to have a good vertical motion and the lateral motion. By using, by moving the body, you can really work with the ground. So if you suppress your body motion, uh, this is exactly opposite to what you often hear from the instructors, but uh, if you suppress your lower body motion, then you will not be able to use the ground. Then it's all upper body. Yeah. Again, again, use the, you have to feel what will, what will give you a good feel of, uh, you know, helping the upper body turn by using the lower body. Instead of just the try to shift. You know, so emphasize, emphasize this motion, up, up. You push the ground and move this hip up, up. Remember this motion here, this motion here, right? Using the elastic band. You have to move the hip up and the shoulder up here. The direction you are moving the shoulder and the hip is uh, this upward motion here, a slightly backward, instead of going backward quite a bit. So just the up, if you move this back quite a bit, then this happens here. This weaving motion here, or almost the figure eight motion here. But if you move this up, 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 then you can get rid of that. Okay? So. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't, don't. So as you go here, don't try to turn this way here. Just, just to keep going up. So assume a little bit reverse pivot posture here. Here, this position here by pushing this side up instead of push here and then move this backward. If the hip moves backward, then it turns like this. You just go up here and then up here and then up here using the leg. Yeah, up, yes. Oh, no, 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 not uh, sliding like that. So. First, the two uh, were really good. So go here, the up, and the up, and the up, and the up. This is essentially the motion. Instead of going slightly this way here. When the pelvis slide, then that happens. This happens here. Yeah, so up, up. Mm -hmm. By pushing the ground, the hip and the shoulder are moving up, 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 up. And you, the accent is this up motion. When you push the ground, push it up, 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 the accent is in the up motion. Up, then up, the up, down, up, and down, up, down, up. Yeah, the up, up motion is the, the accent. So uh, when you have a metronome ticking, okay, then tick, 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 tick. As you uh, push and then move the hip up, your shoulder will turn, 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 instead of, and then going backward. Then the axis is uh, like a spinning like this. So the, the spine axis, spine axis will move like this, instead of like this. When the swing goes back, the, when the back swing is flat here, Upper body leans that way. That means the the, the axis is uh, swaying. But actually, go here, go here, go here. So the uh, let's do this. Put the, your right hand on my shoulder here. And from there, lean forward slightly. And turn to the right. This field here. Okay. So then you cannot move the hip and uh, the the shoulder backward quite a bit.
because your hand is here. So return more this way. This is the, the field you want to have. Now, here. Again, so now put both here, in the two motion, both, both directions. This way and this way. Now, you, this side should be straightened. Okay. Okay. Turn this way, turn the shoulder 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 this way. This is what you need to feel instead of going backward. Yeah. So by, yes, by moving the hip up, up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the shoulder has to, uh, the shoulder has to turn along a bit the steeper plane. Okay, if you if you it goes flat, then the the axis moves that way. Yes. Uh huh. Yep. And then the whole thing can be controlled by the leg action now. So with this push and push and push, shift to 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 push. And then have a more rhythmic up and down motion, use the legs more actively and continue that. So left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Use the leg, push, bring the hip up, 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 like that. And in doing that, in doing that, you are not intentionally turning the upper body, but this turn is coming from the pelvis turn and then shoulder turn here. By, uh, by the leg action. Okay, so leg action first. So the feel you want to have is when you turn, you're opening the leading side, not closing in using the trail side here. So as you turn this way, you're opening this shoulder mm, this way instead of putting this in. When you turn this way, opening this side instead of Closing this in. So always uh, move out, throw out, throw out. So use the arms, and as you turn this way, throw the right arm here. When you turn this way, throw the left arm. Throw, throw, throw by using the leg push. Throw, throw, the, throw, throw the, the, the arm out. No, oh, no, 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 no. So this is coming in here. And then this is here, and this is coming. Instead, here. Okay, watch this. Throw this out, and throw this out, throw this out, throw this out. Yes, and then right, and then left, left throw, right throw. Oh, left throw, and then that right throw. So always the leading side is thrown here, thrown here, thrown here, thrown here. No, 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 the, the right side is active here. On the way down, the right side is active. That's why uh, this is, this, you kill this left side. And then throw, yes. So you must have a good image of throwing the arm outward laterally, throwing the arm outward laterally. So throw out, and then throw out, throw out, and throw out using the body action. It's not the intentional arm throw. If you want to throw this way well, your shoulder still should be in this position, shift here. And then here, by opening the shoulder, throw the arm here. And you are now in this position. Drop this, and then your arm is preparing here. And by turning the shoulder, and then throw the arm. Always shoulder turn, followed by the arm throw. Shoulder turn, and followed by arm throw, instead of intentionally try to use the arms. 
So whether you can throw the arms or not, that makes a big difference because it tells me that uh, you're not really using the lower body to throw, but rather you try to do this with the arms here. So throwing action. In your image, you have to have the correct imaging. What's a throw? Develop good speed and then let it go. That's the throw, right? Instead of keep trying to, uh, trying to keep uh, controlling this. Just develop speed and then let it go. Let it go. So because of the throwing motion, your arm will open like this, wide, moving away from your body, away from your body. Okay, that's the throw motion. Use the shoulder turn to make uh, the throw easy. Yeah, shoulder turn and then throw. Oh, the timing is not right. So you turn already here and then try to do this. This turn motion and then throw. Throw. Continuous, yes, both ways, continuously. Always uh, throw the arms. Particularly left arm, your left, on this side, your left arm is almost, at, at, almost dead. You just uh, turn and then the arm ends up about here. Let it go all the way. Mm -hmm. So in order, in order to throw the, the arm well, your shoulders from the closed position, turn the shoulder, open the left shoulder and then throw, open the right shoulder and throw. But if your shoulder does not turn, okay, if it's just about here, you have to use the arms to do this. But if the shoulder turns enough and using the shoulder turn, let it go, shoulder turn and let it go, shoulder turn and let it go. So when you start the shifting motion, you have to hold the turn. You have to maintain the turn the position. After the shift, you will turn and throw the, the arm. Left arm should go a bit higher. Left arm should go. Yeah. Really throw. Really throw. Throw. Throw, throw, throw. Here, watch my hand. Again, in this one, the key is the hand motion, not your body motion. You have to promote good hand motion here, hand motion here. Always you have to have a good focus. When you use a rope, the end of the rope is the, the focus, right? When you are throwing the hands, then the, your hand is the, the focus. Hand motion should be good all the way here, good all the way here, instead of using focusing on your shoulder motion here. The shoulder motion will help the arm and hand motion. However, okay, it's just a supporting this, and then the goal is you have to have good hand motion here, hand motion all the way here. But if the shoulder goes here, and then that means uh, you're focusing too much on the shoulder. Use the shoulder and promote good hand motion. So try to bring the hand higher. Wait, wait, so let's do this. Here, if you want to bring the hand, hands high here, you have to move the hand like this. Throw, using the speed here, you will throw the hand here. Instead of keep the hand to come here and then turn already and then try to do something with the arm here, you have to start from here. Throw all the way here, using the speed here. So okay, let's, let's put this way here. So I'll move your hand. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Move the, move the lower body to match my, see how I, I move here. Left, shift the left, no, shift the left. So in your right, right. Shift this way, shift this way. Shift, 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 shift. Swing the hands, swing the hands. Yes. 
throw the arms using the lower body, throw the arms, throw the arms, yes. That's a lot, more, a lot simpler motion. A lot simpler motion. Because you are introducing this motion here, suddenly it becomes really complex. If you keep moving the hands along, the, along a plane, it's a, called the hand motion plane. Hand motion plane is about 10 degrees steeper than the swing plane. So the hands are not moving along the swing plane, okay? However, so imagine your hand motion plane here. Move the hands along that plane here. We did the kettlebell swing and the plane trainer. So using the speed here, let it go all the way, let it go all the way, instead of, hmm? so hand motion. Yeah, try to make the hand motion consistent both ways, and then throw, throw out, throw out, throw out, throw out, throw out. Keep it consistent, keep it consistent. So this is, a, this is actually a big change. So this is how you change the image of your, your motion. Because it's always important to have a good intention and the right image of the swing motion. It's not about hitting the ball with your arms. It's about the hand motion. When you hold the club, then it's about the club head motion. Your body will promote good and faster club head motion. But if your body starts introducing unnecessary movement, then overall the swing motion becomes uh, more complex. So this is a mid-sized orange whip here, which is uh, fairly, uh, which, which really good. It's uh, well balanced here. It's uh, heavier than the rope, or club, or anything, and it's well balanced here. So it's, it doesn't have uh, too much weight on the head. When you have too much head on the head, you lose the control. So uh, and then try to hold it maybe in the middle of the grip here. So now swing, swing it back and forth as if you are swinging the rope. And again here, the key is the motion of the end of the whip, right? So pay attention to a consistent motion of the end of the whip, swing back and forth. Uh, as, you, as you repeat the swing, you start killing your leg actions. So use, you have to have a good shift and then push up, up motion so that uh, the swing can be uh, easier. And also here, also here. Don't try to uh, dominate the whip. Let it go. If you feel the motion of the whip, when you have good speed here, it will go automatically to this position, and then go down, go uh, wait here, and then let it go, wait here, and then let it go. Particularly here, wait until this motion is completed, instead of fighting and try to reverse the direction. So keep enough speed here, so that bring the head of the whip down here, instead of here. Keep more motion down here, and wait until this is completed. If you start the downward motion too early, then it will bend a lot. Because the head wants to go that way, but your hands are forcing the whip go that way. So wait until, wait until this is completed all the way here, and then start swing. So play with the whip. Don't try to dominate. Give enough speed in the backswing, so uh, create a big backswing motion. Uh, not enough, not enough. Uh, why? Do you have a pain? No, it's just that well, when I stop, <laughs> I mean, I just keep going. Let, so let it go. Let it go all the way. So feel the motion of the whip. Instead of stopping it intentionally, let it go all the way. More, more, more. Yes. Mm-hmm. Swing. Yep. 
Uh, on the way down, you are just uh, doing this, but use the low body and then throw. On the way down, you are just uh, using the arms here. Your low body is not really supporting the upper body turn. So go here and start shift and then swing. Image this. You, uh, in your backyard, let's say you have a swing okay, under the tree. Your kid is riding or your grand, grandkid is uh, riding. And then you wait until this motion is completed, and then you will push. Ooh, wait, and then push, the same thing. Ooh, wait until this is completed, and then push. But while you are waiting, instead of just standing here, swing, and you have to sh introduce the shift motion so that you can use the body on the way down. But on the way down, you are not using your body at all. It's just the arm, arm swing. Use the body. So again, give enough time, and on the way down, use the body to let it go, okay? Mm, it's arms, it's arms here. Again, hands are reaching out too much, here. Now I have uh, arthritis here, and then that's a left arm problem, but let me just uh, demonstrate don't, don't this. Yeah. Give me this whipping sound. Okay. And then let it go. Currently, what, what you are doing is you are just standing. Standing here. Instead, let it go all the way. Let uh, throw the hands and whip around your body. Enough time. Uh, keep more motion. Bring the head down more. So give enough motion and the more time up there. <coughs> So don't fight. You have to, so in the back swing, your image is let it go all the way here instead of try to quickly bring it down. The, back, the main purpose of the back swing is let it go all the way. Down swing is down swing. But at least in the back swing, you have to promote good wind up instead of rushing down. So remember the swing all the way, uh, wait until this is done and then push. Now, so let's go back to the rope. Swing the rope, but I will move over there. I will stay in front of the target, or I will move this way and this way here. Throw the rope where I am, the direction I am. So currently, it's more a square alignment toward the target. So I try to throw the rope toward me. Mm -hmm. Now I'm here. Okay. Bring the hands a bit closer to your body. Uh, no, no. Bring the hands a bit closer to your body. Yes. Uh, it's going too, too far. Your hands are moving too far out. That's why uh, you have to use the arms on. When the, the hands move away from your body, then you have tendency of this arm motion here. Try to bring the hands a bit closer to the body and then use the body turn. So here. So instead of throwing the here, bring this down and then turn this way here. This way here. Go a bit flatter instead of throw and then go high up here. Go flat like this. So keep the hands a bit closer to your body and then throw where I am. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And then throw more actively, throw more actively. Using the body, throw, throw, throw. Now I'm here. 
Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I'm here. Still keep the hands uh, relatively close to your body. Square. Throw. Throw actively. Using the body. Throw. Using the legs and throw. Keeping the hands reasonably close to your body is important. But that doesn't mean you're just using the arms and try to pull it down, but rather go here, turning the body and then keeping the hands a bit close to your body, then you will be able to turn the body well. So keep this side, the, the swing plane, a bit flatter. Okay? Now let's go to the orange whip again. Do the same thing. Keep the hands a bit close to your body so that do not let the hands go out too much. Then this happens here. Swing. Instead, bring here and then throw. Throw. Mm -hmm. Turn the body and use the body and then throw. Uh, here. What uh, interferes with uh, good motion in this direction is your back swing here. Currently, your back swing is going too, too much inward. So if you want to adjust the overall swing plane more this way, then this side, it has to go more laterally instead of going this way here. But you're turning the body this way because you're not really pushing and then moving this side high up and then let it go this way. Rather, you're turning this way. Yeah. Okay, you have to adjust the back swing more that way, laterally, and then bring the club a bit flatter on this side. So try to, try to again image the whole swing plane here. So if this is the square plane toward the target, if you want to keep the swing plane more inward, then overall it should be adjusted here without changing the stance. So go here this way and then throw this way. If you want to go that way, then from here and then throw that way. Okay? So whole plane should be adjusted because you want to have a consistent swing plane here. So if you want to Go about slide this way here, then go here, and then throw this way. So the shoulder should move a bit higher instead of going flat. So when you have difficulty in throwing, keeping the hands a bit closer to your body and then going this way, it's because the back swing is going inward too much. Then naturally, the downswing should go outward. Your hand has to leave away from your body. Let's see, you have, um, okay, about 20 minutes. Give, your, give all you have. I'll, I'll be honest, I, I don't have anything mentally left. Everything you've told me is stuff that I've spent thousands of dollars and worked on for years and no better. You know, and I'm 60. Uh, I mean, honestly, it's um, to the point where it's... No, well, you can still improve. Oh, I, you and I are the same age. I'm also 60. Yeah, but what if you had... I swing for 46 years at 60. There's not a lot of good golf left for you after that. Well, the, now the quality of life is judged by how long you play uh, you know, golf. So you have a 20, at least 20 more years to come. I, I'm not, I don't want to play like this, though. I, I won't play like this. It's, I don't like it. I, I, I don't want to do golf like this at all. That's why you have, to, you have to have enough motivation to change your swing now. Yeah, imagine imagine uh, the next 20 years. All the stuff you told me, yeah. I've been, it's been what, almost five years, and all of the money, we've been working on the exact same stuff. And it's, it's still... It's that, so you have to really get to the bottom of this. Why? Then uh, you, you are getting the same message again and again, but why can't you change this? Because you are not listening to your body. So you are here, you know, that means uh, you, you, you still have the, uh, the, the desire to uh, change, right? If you want to swing and then change the swing plane, if you play, uh, pay attention to the whip motion here, this is a square motion. If you want to go slightly inward here, 
pay attention to the whip motion. You have to create this motion here. The whole whip motion should show this plane here, right? But if you keep doing the same thing back here, bringing this flat, because your shoulder is turning flat, from the beginning, you are creating the conditions which are not that favorable to uh, this motion here. So if you have the desire to change the swing plane and have a more body-driven swing motion here, you have to change the backswing. Pay attention to this. Guide the, the whip properly in the right direction so that you can come down this way. The image, the motion of the, the whole whip motion here. This is the motion you want to generate. Then this is the backswing you will need to do. But what you do is you go here. Then naturally it's going this way. The hands are moving away. If you keep doing this, then it's hard to go this way. So there's always a cause and effect. So if you want to change the, uh, the effect, you have to address the cause. That's how you approach and solve the problem. So again, it's as simple as this. If you look at the shape of uh, the whip motion here, the square, a bit inward motion here, a bit outward motion here. Mm. So depending on which direction you want to throw the whip, you have to adjust the direction. Then the backswing has to change. You have to guide the whip properly so that you have a favorable condition here, and you can come down this way. But if it goes in this way, it's hard to go this way. Then when you start from here, the natural your hands will move away from your body. Always go this way. So this is the swing you're doing with the arms on here. But when you go here, throw this way, adding the body turn, automatically you will be able to use the body better. That's why I ask you to keep the hands a bit close to your body. Because when the hands go closer to your body, naturally you have to turn your body you know, to move the hands here. From here, if you try to go this way, it doesn't work. This is okay. Without turning the body that much, you can let the hands go out. This is why, this is why it gives you an arm-driven swing here. But if you want to bring the hands a bit closer to the body, then you have to turn your body with it. Naturally, you will use the body motion more here. But all you need is just adjust the this one here. As I said, go a bit more laterally instead of going backward. So try to reorient the whole plane. Okay? Then it includes the backswing motion as well. So slightly, try to come with a slightly inward, inward plane. So yeah, pay attention to, yes, yes, that, that, that path is good. And then keep the hands a bit closer on the way down. Oh, no, no, no. Now, on the way down, what you just did is um, go up here, dropping the club and the hands were going out on the way down. This causes trouble. If the hands goes out, the club head on the way down, it starts with the more steeper plane. You cannot adjust it. Go here. Maintain this here. Come this way and then let it go here. Make it as simple as possible. You see a lot of images on the YouTube, on, on, the, on TV, a lot of people doing this. This is actually something really bad. I have to say this. So go up here, from here, just to come down. Here's an expressway here. Okay, no detour. No, no stoplight here. Just keep coming this way and then swing through. Instead of from here, if you're coming this way already, you are, you are detouring here. The club head is going down, and then it has to go out later. But try to guide the head, head of the whip along the plane you want to move. That's the bottom line. But if you start the downswing with this, already it's moving away from the, that plane. Here. So it's important to have clear intention. And then with that, you have uh, the swing image and move the whip along that uh, plane. Again, so no detour here. If this is uh, the, the plane you want to move the head of the whip, right? Then you don't go below that, get too high, just to, just to try to follow that plane here. So image, image uh, an, uh, you know, a plane, a virtual plane there, 
try to move the whip along that plane. Yes, that's better. Now try to keep the hands a bit closer to the body so that you can turn the body more this way in the downswing. Uh, ha, 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 ha. So here, so let's go, go to the top. Go, uh, no, here, let's go to the top. Top, top of action here. So let's say you are in this position here, right? Then just to bring it this way here. Let's go this way. So again, just to, just to bring it down along the swing plane, come down, and and then turn here so that the whip goes this way. You have to introduce this motion here. It's called the pronation of the right forearm. Instead of going this way here. So again, if you have a whip motion centric perspective here, go here and then it's coming down along this plane. Then your arm will just allow the whip to move along this plane here instead of forcing it to do something. Particularly because this is heavy, this is heavier than uh, you know, the typical uh, object you swing. So you can feel the motion of the end of the whip. Let it go. Particularly if you relax your wrist a little bit, it's easier to move the whip properly. But at the top, you, you hear you are using a lot of effort. You're shaking in this position here. There's no reason to do that. Let it go all the way and just to change the direction. Let it go all the way and then change the direction. Imagine at, at 15 when you initially learned how to drive, you're doing this. So after five minutes, you're completely soaked. But now, hours and hours dri driving is not a problem because you know when to activate the uh, muscles. But when you do this, you have a lot of uh, unnecessary core contractions of the muscles. So they are working against each other. So here. Because that's the main thing I'm thinking about is like, you know, the hours after. I'm, I'm, the whole time I've been thinking, well, how do I, you know, how do I work on this and know that I'm right or wrong and I, I don't have an answer. So, you know so, what I mean? So the, the simplest answer is pay attention to what the motion you want to create. So as long as you have the right intention, and a good image of uh, the target motion you want to generate, then let it go that way. And then get rid of any obstacles that uh, interferes with uh, your motion. If your motion is a faster motion along this plane here, if this is the motion you want to generate, Get rid of all the unnecessary movement which prevents the, the whip move along this plane fast. One of them is coming down this way here. Yeah, okay. that's this is a killer. Great. And then in the backswing, if you turn the shoulder flat, then it goes too flat here, so it moves away from the swing plane. All these are basically making your swing motion more complex. But you are the one using the, all the sensory inputs you have to organize this. Okay, this is uh, not useful. Get rid of it. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest. I've been trying to get rid of the hip thing for five years. And I mean, I know it's there. If I watch myself on video and I think, okay, I didn't do it, and I did it. But I, I, I for me, the bottom line is I literally don't know how to do this. Yeah, that's why you are here. And I'm telling you. Yeah, but, but it's a one-time thing, right? So I... Yeah, that's why before you leave, you have to feel what it is, and then the video will show you, uh, what, you what you have been doing in this session, and how your motion has progressed. Then that will help you to uh, you know, remind, uh, you know, remind yourself always uh, you know, what has to be done. Okay, um, all right, we'll see if we can get to where I, can, I feel something. So, so again, the, the, the main thing is that if you are moving the whip, here, and then generate speed here, then nothing should interfere with the, the whip motion, right? 
if your hands are going out too much, then you're using arms a lot, so you cannot really use the big muscles, then it's a problem. Okay? It goes too flat, again, it causes trouble. Mm -hmm. So if your intention is to move the whip and the body more this way here, while keeping the hands a bit close to the body, and have good body turn this way, then if you go back, this is the motion you want to start here, instead of going anything like this. So make it simple. So pay, pay attention to, that's why we do, we're doing this a continuous motion back and forth, to have the sense of uh, the swing plane. So here, move this back and forth along this plane and increase the magnitude. Don't do anything to change this. Maintain this motion. Don't fight, let it go all the way here. Okay? And the swing here, let it go all the way here. No fight. Give enough time and then transition. Give enough time and transition. Keep moving the whip this way. Nicely. And with that, you have to uh, use the, uh, the legs a little bit. So, try to use the body and then guide the whip along the plane you intend. Keep, keep moving, and you have to have good control. That means uh, the, you are moving the whip, not the whip is moving your body, right? Yeah. So you have to maintain good balance. That means you have to use the legs more actively to control everything. Now I'll record what you're doing and see what happens in the backswing. So ready, go. Swing back and forth continuously. Okay. Yeah. Oh, swing back and forth continuously. Back, back, back swing is not large enough, and also your, the head tends to go this way here. You have crossover because the right arm is resisting. You try to hold it here. The right arm is resisting, and then the whip cannot go any further this way, so it is uh, pushed this way. So you are starting the downswing with this right arm action here. This is the problem. That's why you have arm-driven swing here. First of all, remove the resistance here in the backswing. Let it go all the way. Your goal is to reach as far back as possible here. Even you have to uh, flex your elbow a little bit. That's okay. okay. Don't try to hold it here. Just, just for the drill or my swing? Everything. Okay. We are doing this drill to promote this motion so that you can use it in your actual swing. Okay. You are not even in your actual swing, you are not even at this level here. You are here, about 45 degrees, as you saw in your initial swing. So you need to let it go a lot more. So in the practice, if you can let it go all the way here, then the, the club is uh, stiffer than this. Okay. It doesn't bend much. So if you have a similar feel, then the club will pass this horizontal line a bit more, okay? not go this far down. So with this one, because this is heavier, so the advantage of this is uh, it's heavier and also flexible, so you can let the head go all the way here. Don't fight here. Minimize the bending here by uh, letting it go. Okay? Using the speed here, I will keep saying the same thing, using the speed here and then let it go all the way here instead of fighting. But what happens is you're fighting here, with this arm here. And when the right arm does not allow this to go any further, then it keeps moving this way. That's why you have a crossover posture. So let, let it go with your right arm, okay? And let it go a bit more. And then from there, all you need is just to reverse the direction. Then the swing motion becomes really simple because it's moving along the same plane. But if it goes away from the plane, you are introducing this perpendicular motion, then swing becomes complicated. 
then you have to compensate this on the way down. So again, let it go all the way here. Okay? No rush in the down. Just, a, just a easy on your arms and feel the motion of the whip. Uh, it was short. Let it go all the way. Feel the, feel the motion of the whip. Swing. Swing. Easy on your wrist and the arms. When you relax your arms a little bit, then you will be able to feel the motion of the whip better. Mm, the motion is not consistent. Yeah, the motion is not consistent. This I, is I a, needed to do this 30 years ago. So here. If you really use the motion here, then it will go here. If you feel, if you have this with the plane trainer, the kettlebell, what I emphasized was using this speed and then let it go, throw. So if you, if you just throw this, let it go, it'll go automatically here. Because you're holding this end here, it cannot go away from your body, then it will go around your body. The rope swing the same. When you give enough speed, then it will wrap around your body. So this one the same. Give enough speed, then it will go here. No resistance. Let it go all the way here. Swing. Swing. Take a small step leftward. And then try to maintain consistent plane. This is what you need to generate, consistent motion, by adjusting your body motion. So focus is on the whip motion. So come up with the consistent whip motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, feel the motion of the whip. Uh, in the back swing, you are turning, turning flat, flat too much. So rather, have the, the image of keeping the arms in front of your body here, instead of going here. So the, the faster you move this whip, the easier to bring here. Almost the move it, almost the hit your back with the whip here. That much. Let it go and then let it hit your, uh, let it hit your back. The, this shaft hits your back here. That much. So do not fight. Let it go all the way and then so that it hits your back. Yes. Again. Mm -hmm. And use your, wrist, uh, use your wrist a little bit and then promote the, this whip motion. Use, use the wrist to promote the whip motion. Add the wrist motion so that the whip can go further. Yes, instead of lifting the whole arm, yes, use the wrist. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot more consistent. Yes. Let me, so give me, give me maybe five swings, I will record. Ready, go use the wrist, so let, let it go with the wrist motion. Two, three, four, five, yes. When you let the wrist go, the motion is a lot more consistent because you have a lot of resistance uh, from your right, right arm. That's why it's pushed that way. We use the wrist, so let, let it go with the wrist motion. Two, three, four, five, yes. Now you're a bit easy on this, so it keeps moving this way here. Say that again. When you have really rigid the right arm, okay, you resist here, 
it cannot go this way any, any further. And then when you have a faster motion, it's pushed this way here. So that's why you have a crossover. But you intentionally use the wrist to uh, increase, increase the whip motion at the end. It will follow this way. So don't try to resist with the rigid wrist and the arm here. No need to put a lot of effort here. Let it go with the wrist motion, intentional wrist motion. Let it go further down. On the way down, keep the hands closer to your body. Turn the body this way, turn the body this way in the downswing. Let it go. Let it go. So this is uh, something you need to practice a lot. Yeah. So uh, this, if this is a bit heavy, then there's a shorter one it's called the compact size. That's, that's also useful. Okay. And then particularly, the rope is a good tool because it's uh, so flexible, so you cannot manipulate it with uh, your hand motion. So you have to guide it correctly. So the last one, so rope swing. Again, try to shake off uh, the sticker at the end of the rope. Still, you have the feel of uh, letting the wrist go. Swing, throw, opening the body this way, and then throw the rope. Open the body and throw. So practice this a lot. The only way you can change the overall, uh, overall the way you move the body is have a continuous motion. And don't fight. Let it go. Okay? So work with the device you are dealing with. Go. Use the wrist. So let, let it go with the wrist motion. Two. Three. Four. Five. Yes. Oh, the motion is a lot smoother and a lot more continuous. You made a lot of uh, changes already. But although this is not the level I want and you want, but with this motion, continue swing back and forth and using different devices, uh, try to stay away from the club for a while. Stay away from hitting the ball. Use different devices. When you can negotiate with the other device and then work with the device, that means you start adjusting your body motion in response to uh, the target motion you want to generate. So that's the idea. You should be able to control your body motion. If you insist that the same motion all the time, there's no way to change anything, right? So particularly when you deal with the different devices, this is good because they have different requirements. They have different inertia properties. Then you have to adjust your body. That means you always have to work with uh, your body motion to, uh, to generate the good motion, right? So once you start controlling your body motion, then it's a lot easier to, to generate the motion you want. In the end, it's just a matter of having the right intention. Yeah. And then your body will be able to deliver, deliver that motion. But if you don't have a clear intention and you don't have control over your body, then you just have to uh, use the, the, the swing you used for the last 40-some years. really appreciate your time. Yeah.